So at this point, we've seen how to create some very simple point type. And if you remember, it allows us to create type on separate lines of information. That's going to be great for us in due time. However, as you will see, there are different things that we'll need to do with this type in order to make it look the way we want it to look. Now, talking about type and the way it looks and how it works, it's one thing for me to show you how the type tool works, but you should always keep in mind that's like me showing you how to swing an axe. It's not necessarily going to make you a lumberjack or a fireman, right? You're going to have to go through some training to be able to work with type very effectively. And that's why I'm going to refer you to a series of articles available at KillerSites.com on typography that I've offered, authored myself. So look at those type articles and the different ways that you can work with type to get some good insight into how to work successfully with your typography. However, let's look at the type tool a little bit closer. If I wanted to, I could also affect a number of things about this type. And that would be to work with it with regards to whether it's a point type or whether we set up a paragraph of text. So for example, as we saw before, if I just take the type tool, click and let go, and then start typing something, Actually, let me just write something here. So typing something. Notice to escape that particular confines, command return, if you remember. Now, here's the difference. When we were typing with the point type and just, you know, all the way along, there was no wrapping. Nothing was really happening. However, what if we wanted to create a paragraph of type? Well, one of the ways we can do that is to use the type tool and then click and drag out an area. And now as you can see there is this box around the area and our blinking cursor is right over here. Now I'm not going to type out a bunch of garbage text or anything like that for you so I'm just going to ask you to open up a browser. I'm just going to open up Safari here and you can grab some Latin text. I'm going to go to LIP SUM. Just do a Google search on Lipsum, and it'll take you to a place called Lipsum.com, which stands for the Lorem Ipsum text. And Lorem Ipsum is something that graphic designers have been using as placeholder text for many, many number of years. So, for example, if I were to take this first paragraph of Latin text, and then I'll Command Tab or Alt Tab on a PC, go back to Photoshop inside this text area I can now paste in my text and the shortcut for that under the edit command again is command V. So I've pasted in my text. So let's look a little bit closer at this in comparison to what we did over here. Well unlike the point type this has now created a number of different options. We see that the text is not only wrapping it's also got hyphenation inside of that text as well. And there's a lot of other possibilities that we can work with. Also notice this. You'll see that there is a little square at each of these corners and the one at the very bottom has a little cross inside of it. What that's visually indicating to you is that there is actually more text inside of this box that we can't see. There's an overlap of sorts. So if I were to come over here and select right on this point, you'll notice that when you move this text box, what it actually ends up doing is allowing you to increase the size of the box itself. It does not increase the size of the text as you can see. And what it does is it just allows for all of the text that's inside to wrap ar itself around. Now notice this. I would need to really stretch this out to get all of that type to be visible. And the reason being is because the type inside this box is set to 25 points, which is actually quite large for a paragraph of text. So if I wanted to select all of this text, well, let's see. If I were to just select this, excuse me, let's try that again. If I were to select just what I see and say, hey, you know, I really want this text to be at 12 points. Well, look what happens. Everything after that selected area is still large. So the way to select everything inside of this 
box, whether it's visible or whether it's being hidden, is to come to the selection and say select all, control A or command A on a Mac. And as you can see now it's all selected and if I put it all at 12 points, great. Now you can see that everything is inside of this area and you'll notice that that little square here is just an empty white square. It doesn't have the cross in there anymore. And we can still work with this by making this a smaller paragraph of information. You can make it larger, whatever you really need to do. Notice that the hyphenation is still in place, but I'm going to show you how we can remove that hyphenation if that is in fact something you wanted to do or any other number of things. So let's take a look. We've got this layer here, layer one. See, as soon as I select out of it, it starts with the name Lorem Ipsum, and there it is, Lorem Ipsum Dolor Sit Amet. So at this point, we could select, you know, one of these, like the typing, and I can make that larger just by working with the sizing as I did there. And here I am typing something and there's a small paragraph of information right here. So working with the type tool, clicking inside there is how you can access the information that you want to have. And if you want to make it smaller or if you want to make it larger, something that you can do quite simply by working with your type in this fashion. So come back and I'm going to show you how we can really start augmenting this type so that it starts looking a whole lot better than it does right now.